Um, let me ask you this, since we can't compare across different countries, and I've talked well, about that. Well, we can. We can look at things across countries, but you have to do it in a particular way. So, right. for example, I'll give you a simple question. That is, can you name me one place in the world that's banned guns, either all guns or all handguns, and seen murder rates fall or even stay the same? Every single place that's banned guns has seen increases, often very large increases, in, in murder rates. And they I would say Japan. What, what about Japan? That's the example they often use. And I know the answer, but I figured I'd toss it out there. Right. Well, uh, the thing is with Japan, it, you want to look before and after they have the gun control laws. Right. Japan's had a low murder rate as long as we have numbers from them. And they've had very strict gun control laws since the 1700s. Only samurai were basically legally able to go and own guns. So, you know, you want to have something where we can say, you know, like when the UK banned handguns in January 97, uh, their homicide rate went up 50 percent over the next eight years. Uh, you see similar increases. So you look at island nations because uh, gun control advocates will say, OK, well, it's true. But murder and violent crime went up in Chicago and in Washington, D.C. after we had bans. But that's not really a fair comparison, they'll say, because people could go and get guns from you know, rest of Illinois or Indiana or Maryland or Virginia. The thing is, that doesn't explain why it went up. Right. People could buy guns from those places beforehand. It may explain why it didn't go down as they were predicting. So if they really believe that that caused it to go up, it'd be kind of nice if they had shared that secret with people before the bans were passed. Right. But, but even if you look at island nations that can't go and blame a neighbor, you see every single time that you've had a ban, murder rates have gone up often, you know, five, six, seven fold after bans have been in place. And turns out this, this is murder as opposed to homicide. I want to make sure we're getting our right, both. Well, I mean, both murder and homicide, depending upon how the place measures it. Right. Not everybody measures murder, but um, uh, you see an increase in both of those. And, and for most countries, murder and homicide are much more close to each other than is true in the United States. Right. But, uh, you know, uh, you'd think it would cause gun control advocates some pause. You know, usually the response you'll get back is, well, we're not talking about banning guns. <laughs> but, but the one is, I'm not, I don't believe that. I think they right. would like to ban guns if they could. But two, um, the point stands for other laws. You have to ask yourself who's most likely to obey the different gun control laws that you have. The reason why murder rates go up after bans is that it's the most law-abiding good citizens who turn in their guns, not the criminals so much. And to the extent that you disarm law-abiding citizens relative to criminals, you actually make it easier for them to go and commit crimes. And that's, that's true for gun control generally. So sure. I'm not, not to mention the moral reprehensibility of forbidding someone their God-given right to protect themselves. It's, it, 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 to me, is immoral to say, well, this woman doesn't have a right to defend herself because David Hogg was on CNN once. 